Okay, this video is a comparison of plant and animal foods, or really answering the question, what is the difference between plant and animal foods? First of all, plants basically contain all the good stuff. Plants contain dietary fiber. Dietary fiber protects you from leaky gut. It also is used, the short chain, the good bacteria convert it into short chain fatty acids, especially butyrate, which is used to maintain the tight junctions on the intestinal lining, the epithelium of the gut, the enteric tract. So it prevents leaky gut. It <clears throat> keeps normal uh, gut permeability. It also prevents blood-brain barrier increased permeability. So it prevents leaky brain. The same butyrates go through the blood, travel to the brain endothelium, and they maintain its tight junctions. Potassium is a vasodilator. Magnesium is a vasodilator. The nitrates are the precursors of nitric oxide. We talked about this pathway before. The back of the tongue bacteria converted to nitrites, and in the stomach to nitric oxide goes into the blood, systemic vasodilation. When you walk out in the sun, the reason you feel good right away is because the sun releases nitric oxide precursors from the subcutaneous tissues. Okay, so anyways, plants are what it's all about for opening up blood vessels, and what every organ in your body functions better when it has good blood flow. Plants are the key to good blood flow. That's why the best diet for reversal of coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis, is a low-fat vegan diet, okay? That's important to realize. Another thing is people say, well, what about nitrates? I heard nitrates were bad. I heard nitrates, you know, in meat, you know, processed meat, salami, bacon, and all this stuff increase the risk of cancer. That is true, but it's for a different reason. The nitrates in meat <clears throat> are different. There's more amides and uh, amines that are available to react with them to form nitrosamines, nitrosamides, but also more importantly, in plants there's lots of antioxidants and they prevent the abnormal uh, chemical reactions that produce nitrosamines and nitrosamides that are common in meat. So you don't get that problem with, uh, so the nitrates that you'll find in greens, you know, that are the precursors for nitric oxide, they end up being a beneficial to you versus the excessive nitrites that are sometimes used to cure meat and make processed meat end up being bad for you. So there, there's a difference in how they're handled because of the lack of antioxidants in meat. They don't have hardly any antioxidants in animal foods because the animals already use them up. Okay, the next thing good about uh, plant foods, they got lots of antioxidants, vitamin C and the other antioxidants. They're alkaline, especially fruits and veggies, whereas meat is highly acidotic, especially because of the animal protein. There's more protein in animal foods in general than there is in plant foods. You know, if you eat a, a vegan diet, you're going to probably end up about 80, 10, 10, 80 percent carbohydrate, 10 percent fat, 10 percent protein. That would be sort of average numbers. Versus if you eat a, a meat-based diet, you're going to have way more protein. For example, salmon. Okay, salmon's 50 percent protein, 50 percent fat. Um, animal foods don't have any carbohydrate other than milk. Okay, so you're going to always have you're going to tend to always have high protein and high fat. Both of those things are toxic to the human body. Um, animal protein in particular has a lot more methionine and that especially as you know part of its metabolism is the sulfuric acid and induces a metabolic acidosis. Just amino acids in general, they're acidic. That's why they're called amino acids, okay? Um, and there's some acidity from fat too, but amino acids, that's important and the excessive amount of acidity from eating animal foods leads to a low-grade metabolic acidosis, then the body has to buffer the pH. Normal human pH is slightly alkaline. So if you call 7 neutral pH on a pH scale of 1 to 14, 7.4 is slightly alkaline, meaning above 7. And the body has to regulate that. So the kidney does it by, for example, it'll excrete uh, hydrogen protons and it'll simultaneously couple that to the excretion of calcium ions. Okay, and when it does that, it's now pushing more calcium into the urine. That calcium pushed into the urine can precipitate and plug up the kidney tubules due to calcification, and that over time can contribute to causing kidney failure. In addition, if you get large amounts of calcium precipitating, that will produce kidney stones, which can be extremely painful. Okay, but the acidity contributes to CKD, chronic kidney disease and kidney failure. So metabolic acidosis related to animal protein is a bad thing. It also creates an unfavorable microenvironment for cancer cells. It promotes the growth of cancer cells. Cancer cells are in competition with the surrounding adjacent cells, and acidity promotes growth of cancer over alkalinity, which promotes growth of the normal cells in, in comparison to the cancer cells. Um, the, can the cancer um, animal protein has more leucine in it. Um, and more methionine, which both increase activation of mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin, which is a nutrient-sensing pathway 
that's like a building contractor getting ready to build. When a cell replicates, it has to make a copy of itself. So it needs double all its internal contents in terms of raw materials to build. So mTOR says don't build, don't replicate the cell until it has everything available. Well, it turns out the rate limiting step tends to be leucine, like a branch chain amino acid. Um, other things that increase mTOR activation include saturated fat and uh, iron. All of these things are more abundant in meat. So meat promotes cell replication, which increases the rate of cancer growth. It also accelerates aging because you're going to reach the Hayflick limit sooner. That's the maximum number of cell divisions that a cell gets, you know, a regular body cell. Not a stem cell, but a regular cell in your body. So you call that a somatic, you know, non-germ cell, not part of your gonads, okay, or other stem cells. So anyways, the point is it accelerates aging by accelerating, uh, you know, mTOR activation. Um, high saturated fat in meat, it's obesogenic. The more higher percentage of calories you eat from fat, the fatter you get. It causes insulin resistance, so it, it increases your incidence of diabetes. <laughs> it sticks the red blood cells together because it increases LDL cholesterol, so it overcomes the zeta potential, the RBCs, a negative charge on their outer surface. LDL cholesterol is big enough and positively charged to stick them together, okay? And by sticking them together, it causes tissue hypoxia because the red blood cells can't deliver their oxygen as well to the tissues because they're all stuck together in these blobs of rouleau formation or blood sludge, you can also call it. In addition, I've given lectures on the endothelial glycocalyx, the sugar-coating glycoproteins on the surface of all red blood cells and other blood cells and the endothelium, the lining of arteries. And what happens is when you eat saturated fat, it causes activation of the neutrophils. Those are the white blood cells. They're the first responders of the immune system. And they will release MPO, myeloperoxidase, which is normally part of their reaction to inflammation. But unfortunately, when they release MPO, it's very cationic, very positively charged. And these MPO particles, they drop down onto the glycocalyx of the endothelium, the arterial lining cells, and they cause it to collapse. And once the glycocalyx of glycoproteins collapses down, the glycoproteins are very negatively charged. They're full of sulfates, things like heparin sulfate, cholesterol sulfate, etc., and sialic acids that are also negatively charged. They will collapse down, and then sitting beneath them, not as tall, are adhesive molecules, things like VCAM, vascular cell adhesion molecule. And now you'll start getting the white blood cells adhering to the endothelium and the red blood cells also sticking to the endothelium. And that's the beginning of inflammation and the beginning of a potential blood clot. So they're very pro-thrombotic, uh, pro-inflammatory. That's all bad. You don't want any of this stuff, okay? Uh, so they're bad for blood flow in a big way, all right? Um, fish, for example, a lot of people think, oh, well, red meat's bad, but, you know, fish and chicken are good. No, they're terrible foods, okay? Fish is like the most acidic food, okay? It's super acidic, so it contributes in a big way to metabolic acidosis. It's often contaminated with HG and a whole bunch of estrogenic chemicals. The oceans basically are a sewer. That's how they're used by the modern world. And uh, uh, fish foods and stuff from the ocean is very routinely contaminated with this and many other chemicals that are bad, PCBs, etc. And the so-called, you know, omega-3s are quite overrated. Um, they're an immunosuppressant. I don't recommend O3 supplementation associated with increased risk of obesity, insulin resistance, uh, atrial fibrillation, immunosuppression, prostate cancer. Um, in animal studies, you know, metastatic cancer, I, I think they're like one of the most overrated things. And people are overdosing on them, especially the long-chain ones. You get enough omega-3s from your low-fat animal foods. Dr. McDougall has confirmed that, and other work has confirmed that, and Brian Peskin's work has confirmed that. Okay, AGEs, advanced Caucasian end products. And you especially find these in high-fat, high-protein foods, which is typical of animal foods. But there are also high AGEs in nuts. I think nuts are one of the overrated plant foods. You have a lot of arachidonic acid in your animal foods, in your meat. You don't get hardly any in uh, plant foods. So it's an omega-6 uh, fat that's uh, pro-inflammatory. So you don't want to be ingesting that in large amounts. Estrogenic chemicals. Estrogens are given to animals, to cattle, to fatten them up more rapidly. So there's more of that in uh, animal foods. There's a moderate amount of phosphorus in animal foods that's more readily observed than the phosphorus in plant foods. Phosphorus in plant foods is typically tied up with phytates and it's poorly absorbed, so you don't get much of that into your body. In particular, in animal foods, for example, in chicken, they add a lot of phosphorus because it helps reduce what's called purge, the seeping of fluid, uh, when you're trying to work with uh, animal foods to cook them, and it's kind of disgusting. Um, and that additive... Um, Phosphorus is, you know, it's inorganic. Organic means bound to chemicals in our body, and that stuff is not very high, highly absorbed. But the inorganic stuff, um, it is absorbed highly. And 
Um, you also see this, of course, in hot, very high amounts in processed food or bad, but we're talking about meat. So anyways, the purge, though, these additives uh, added in chicken are very highly absorbed, so you get a lot of phosphates. They have a nephrotoxic effect, bad for the kidneys. You don't want that. Uh, the heme iron from animal foods is highly absorbed, very high percentage absorbed. You know, it's in the ballpark of five times more absorbed than the iron from animal foods. So, you know, you could have the same amount of quantity in iron in spinach as you do in meat, but the meat iron will be much higher absorbed because of the heme iron uh, aspect of it, bound to the heme. Um, and it's pro-oxidant, you know. You don't want to be iron overloaded. The average man is iron overloaded in the Western world in his 20s. Uh, women don't become iron overloaded after postmenopausal because they were, they're able to keep their iron levels down from menstruation. Animal foods have higher sodium, um, often because the sodium is used as a preservative and it's used as a flavorant. You know, you can just eat a fruit off the table and it tastes great, okay? But animal foods, they're kind of disgusting unless you cook them and you fry them, you, do all, or you, uh, you, you, you put salt on them or other steak sauce or something. They're kind of inherently disgusting. If you are walking down a path in the forest, and you see a carcass on the ground, you know, flies buzzing around it, it's disgusting. You don't want to get down on your knees and take a bite out of it. You could in any ways if you tried. Your teeth are flat. They're made for grinding plants, not for biting out of a carcass of an animal. On the other hand, if you're walking through uh, a room and there's uh, fruits, and fruits on the table, you want to eat them. They taste good. You're made for that. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, animal foods are often fried, you know, fried hamburgers, uh, fried uh, fish, and it's often fried on nonstick cookware, POFAs, with you know, F-minus related compounds in them that are bad for your health. Uh, animal foods like beef can cause xenocyelitis, meaning that they have sialic acids with new 5GC instead of new 5AC. The whole point is that they're similar enough that the gut absorbs them and adds them onto our own bodily proteins, for example, gly glycoproteins. They're kind of like sialic acids are like the identity card of a cell on its outer surface. And what I'm basically saying here is that Human cells will incorporate the animal-related uh, new 5GC, but then the immune system, so the absorption cells aren't smart enough to recognize that it's a foreign uh, chemical, but the immune system is smart enough. It reads these things by Braille, feels the outer surface glycoproteins, and it'll cause inflammation. That's called xenocyelitis, okay? Okay, viruses are present in meat, but they're, they can be related to humans, uh, like bovine leukemia virus. You don't, you don't, you know, plant stuff, Nobody gets plant diseases, okay? Nobody gets Dutch elm disease. That doesn't occur in humans. So you don't get uh, these viruses that can spread from uh, an animal food to a human. Okay, you get a lot of bioaccumulated herbicides and pesticides from eating animal foods. For example, at a CAFO, uh, Concentrated Animal Feeding Organization, they'll feed them GMO corn that's all going to be sprayed with atrazine, okay? So then you get these bioaccumulated levels of atrazine. You don't want that. That's... Um, uh, not only is it feminizing, it also is um, a mitochondrial inhibitor. <laughs> okay, that's really bad. Um, and soy uh, is routinely sprayed with glyphosate. Typically, you know, cheap processed foods are made with these things, uh, but, you know, soy is sprayed with glyphosate. Uh, and, you know, that's glycine phosphate, and that's a toxic substance. It's, I've given entire lectures on that. The big famous lady on that is Stephanie, you know what, Sen, if you know her. Um, anyways. They also are related to increased production of heterocyclic amines that are toxic um, to the body that increase the risk of breast and prostate cancer. We talked about meat leading to the production of increased nitrosamines and nitrosamides. You'll also produce in the gut, because meat, meat changes the gut flora, the lack of dietary fiber and the um, increase in the amount of protein causes a change in the gut flora, the bacteria in the colon. And you get increased amounts of tyrosine, for example, converted to something called P-cresyl sulfate. You get increased amounts of tryptophan converted to indoxyl sulfate. And these are both toxic to the kidney. So what I'm trying to say is bad secondary processes are activated uh, by eating more meat. Meat's got more carnitine in it, and that ends up being converted to trimethylamine oxide, which is very pro-atherogenic. That's also toxic to the kidneys. Whereas in the, so basically, other than the advantage of meat having more B12, which is easy to obtain, that's the only pill you're going to need to take if you're a vegan. That's the only one that, that's the only one I take, for example. I take methylcobalamin, the one with the fewest ingredients and no stevia in it. Stevia is like contributes to infertility. You don't want that. Anyways, all the good stuff's in meat, all the vasodilators, 
Um, the stuff you need to run your ion pumps in your cells. Average person eats way too much sodium and not enough magnesium. So these are what everybody's deficient in. Most common deficiencies, nutrient deficiencies in the, in the Western world are fiber, <laughs> potassium, magnesium, okay? Because those all come from plant foods, all right? I talked about how the alkalinity protects you from kidney failure and lowers your risk of cancer. Um, and you want to be low in protein. You know, the things that have shown increased longevity in mammals are, you know, of course, calorie restriction, but it also turns out low protein diets have shown increased longevity. And you can specifically, even just especially, it appears, this isn't proven, but it appears that you can just restrict methionine um, and get increased longevity. That hasn't been proven yet in humans, but that seems to be the case in animals. And what I'm trying to say is, low protein is beneficial. And don't get me wrong, there are some good things about beans, and they do have a good ability to satisfy hunger for a prolonged amount of time because they're high in fiber as well. But you have to be a little careful not eating too much of beans, especially if you have cancer and especially if you have kidney failure because they do have relatively high amounts of proteins. Beans are typically about 30% of calories from protein. Okay, we talked about the phosphorus and iron in uh, plant foods not being well absorbed because it's bound to other things. Um, it just isn't well absorbed. I don't... I think these high-fat uh, plant foods and that are high in estrogen or advanced glycation end products like, uh, I don't recommend these foods, soy, flax, nuts, seeds, etc. cetera. Uh, but anyways, so the point I wanted to make was if you had to sum it all up, basically all of the good stuff except for B12 is abundant in plants. And then all of the bad stuff is abundant in meat. So it's a no-brainer. I mean, this is much better. It's a no-brainer. That's why it's not debatable. That's why, you know, paleo, keto, carnivore, low carb is a joke. 